Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokos Mystery. This will be part 330. We're continuing with our lesson titled Life Under the Gods. This will be part 3. We're talking about the times in which this current reality will shift. The end will be ushered into a hitherto uncomprehendable reality designed for races that are superior to the human race, which will dominate the Earth's surface. <clears throat> We're looking at the move of the Luciferians who will be worshipped as gods. We're also looking at the move of the Lord who is progressing and completing his eternal master plan of the ages. The plan in which the sons will enter into their calling, their destiny, and ultimately their positions. Scripture teaches in the times following the beginning of sorrows, the heavens, which are vast, sprawling regions stretched out over the earth matrix, will experience many things. The heavens are regions undetectable at this time to the human race, but even now as we speak, the heavens are manifesting things which are affecting the human race. People are hearing sounds coming from invisible regions they can't detect, sounds that commensurate with trumpets, vast thunders, things that they can't pinpoint, which alert us to understand that the heavens are entering into the stage in which is being set for the coming reality that will engulf the earth. <clears throat> what we find, the heavens, like the earth, will experience many things. <clears throat> One that both will experience will be the voice of their creator. The heavens will hear the voice of the Lord. <clears throat> Turn to Isaiah 48, verse 13. Here the Lord talks about the operation of the heavens, their origin, and how he manifests them into doing the things that he has designed for them to do. Isaiah 48, verse 13. Mine hand also hath laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand hath spanned the heavens. Now we came to a conclusion when he speaks about his right hand, he's talking about the agency in which he has authorized things to take place in the creation. In other words, YHVH is the right hand of Elohim. It is YHVH along with the direction of Elohim that set doors, bars, and gates, making the invisible sea non-functional. It's YHVH that has restored the um, operation, if you will, of the earth set the moon in the course that it's currently in, stabilized the planets of this system, and basically brought things back to a working state. So the Lord refers to him as his right hand. He says, my right hand hath spanned the heavens. <coughs> the word span there comes from a Hebrew term, topak, which means extended. It also means to stretch out. So it's YHVH that has 
basically designed the contour of the heavens in the state in which we see them. He goes on to say, My right hand hath spanned the heavens. When I call unto them, they stand up together. So Elohim <clears throat> mandates the operation of the heavens according to his design, his spoken word, sets the heavens in operation. Now why does he say, when I call unto them, they stand up? Well, basically, what we had learned at last lesson, <clears throat> the heavens are great storehouses. <clears throat> Things that are contained within them, which from time to time are poured out on the earth. We know that at the time of the journey of Israel into the promised land from the wilderness, manna was rained down upon them, Quails were rained down upon them. Flesh was rained down upon them out of a clear sky. What does that mean? That means that the heavens are stratified regions over the earth. When the Lord wants to impart something out of them, he calls them and they lift up. They stand up on edge so that the contents within them don't rain down on the heavens, it rains down on the earth that is in the clear. We know this happens periodically because you still have rains of fish, birds, fowl, stones that come out of a clear sky. Periodically, the heavens are spoken to in which they rearrange themselves so the contents can be brought forth onto the earth for whatever reason those in control of the heavens, meaning the Lord, YHVH, want this to happen. This is going to be a consistent uh, activity at the time of the beginning of sorrows. Yes. I was watching this thing the other day, and, and there's a place on earth that every year rains fish, and the, and the people of the village, they go out and they gather them up, and they have a huge fish fry, wow. but it's a scheduled event because every year it happens. Mm -hmm. Fish come out of the sky. Yes. Can I, can I please ask a question? Yes. Do you know, is it like a, like a, like a tribe in a, in, a, in a thermal country? Or do you, do you know where it's at? Or is no. That no. That's no. The, the, I don't uh, know where it's at. They don't want people to know. Wow, that's amazing. It might be in the Philippines. Every somewhere. year, that's amazing, isn't it? That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, if you study Freudian ph phenomena, you find it's not so amazing. It's a consistent phenomenon. Well, I've heard like you know how the you know how the government tries to explain it and all that instead of saying it actually comes from above because it does come from above. It's just but you're saying so you say it's a stratified or what, stratified regions above the heavens. Above the visible sky, yes. Above the visible sky. Yes, okay. the heavens are invisible. You can't detect them because they lie above the veil mechanism, the darkness level <coughs> that God put. Uh, what science calls a space-time continuum. There are many things that come down out of a clear sky. Ice, people, uh, vehicles. What? Cats? Frogs. Yeah. I know about the frogs because that was the, the, the Egyptian but But cats... The old English expression is raining cats and dogs. Oh, but it's real then. There was evidently some uh, event or events which led them to be saying that. Oh, wow. Well, it gives the understanding that the heavens, there are certain regions of the heavens that are comparable to life on Earth. It has three dimensional uh, topography, uh, it has yeah, just like you have life on earth because during the time of the <clears throat> beginning of the tribulation era millions of people are going to be transported into the heavens take up residence there and ultimately at the second coming be transported back to earth just to refresh my memory yes. I believe you said that wife, excuse me, Elohim controls the spiritual gate, gates, bars and doors. Yes. And white VHD physical. 
So when we're talking about physical foods, for example, or hail, that all comes from the physical gates, bars, and doors. Mm. So what items or what elements would come from the spiritual gates, bars, and doors? Gates, bars, and Conditions. Sorry, what was it? Gates, bars, windows, and doors. Ba gates, what? Bars. B -A -S. Bars. Oh, bars. Okay. Conditions. Okay. Uh, the spirit of fear is going to chase people around. Uh, <coughs> other <coughs> things in uh, Luke 21, 17 that are going to have people on their backs with heart attacks and stuff. Right. The principalities, thrones, dominions, all that is under Elohim's control, okay. dominion. Did you say that Wayne controlled two out of the four? I say he has access. For instance, it was YHVH that opened the windows of heaven and the flood came right. out. It's YHVH that opened the windows during Israel's traje trajectory across the Sinai Desert and it rained down manna and all the rest of it. But does he have control over all four of us, gates, bars, windows, and doors? Or only two of us? Only two. Right. Only two. Which, um, which of us? The windows and the doors. The windows and doors, okay. So the gates and the bars are, are under elements. So it says, when I call to them, they stand up. Is that Elohim? It's Elohim, yes. In other words, <coughs> what YHVH did was he spread them out in descending, ascending levels. <coughs> when YH, when our Elohim speaks, the levels stand up so that the content doesn't come down to the lower heavens, it comes down to earth. And this is going to happen during the uh, <coughs> era of the beginning of sorrows. You're going to see radical changes throughout creation. For some reason, Jonesy, I've got both YHVH and Elohim in this particular scripture. I've got Elohim when I call to them, and then they stand up together as YHVH. Either well, them is YH, when I call to them is YHVH, and then they stand up together is from Elohim. I don't know why I have both of them there. There must have been a conversation that we've had. Yeah, more than likely. Uh, YHVH has access to the heavens. He doesn't have access to the primary heavens. He has access to the secondary heavens, and he uses them for his particular um, uh, activities. And in that respect, he is the ability to egress and access certain areas of the heavens. When the beginning of sorrows takes place, the Luciferians are going to have access to egress points and entrance points in the heavens. That's why they're going to be able to take humans off the earth through the portal areas that are going to open up and incorporate them in their basic mercantile system. Are you yes. saying the Luciferians are going to have access to the storage regions of heaven? Some. Some. But they don't use it for storage, they're using it for transportation. They're going to use it for their mercantile system. But the question is, are they able to remove whatever's stored there, or are they using it to move from one point to another? I think they can use it for re relocating from one point to another. Once Lucifer takes control of a third of the lower heaven, okay. he's going to set up his mercantile system. He's going to be moving stuff from one place to another in that respect. <coughs> but let's go on. <coughs> Principle, scripture teaches at the time of the gathering, at the time of the gathering, they, the heavens, like the earth, will release all who indwell them to participate in the gathering. Psalms 50, verses 1 to 6. The mighty God, even the Lord, hath spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun unto the going down thereof. 
Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God hath shined. Our God shall come and shall not keep silence. A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very tempestuous round about him. So it's talking about the day that the Lord returns for the great gathering. This is not the day of judgment that's already gone. This is a progression toward the culmination of the gathering. He's going to descend from heaven, and as he descends, he is going to speak to the heavens and the earth. Verse 4, he shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Now we want to take a look at this word judge. It comes from a Hebrew term, din. And what it literally means is <clears throat> determine the position and destiny of his called. Determine the position and destiny of the one that is called. So he calls to the heaven. What does he call? The next verse tells us. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Now we want to match scriptures here. This is very important. Very important. Hold your thought. Very, very, extremely important. Turn to the Gospel of John. Gospel of John, the 10th chapter, verse 16. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. Hear his call. He's talking about Psalms 50. What we just heard. They're going to be in the heavens. He says, other sheep I have. So they were alive on the earth at this time. Subsequently, they have died. He's talking about people like the counterpart of the angel that shows John the revelation. He's talking about people like Paul, Apollos, all those that are going to be destined to be gathered <coughs> at this time. They shall hear my voice. There shall be one fold, one shepherd. What is the one fold that it's going to be? The church of the firstborn. That's when it comes into existence. They're going to be rewarded. They're going to be given position in the phase. Yeah, what's your question? After the gathering. After the gathering, right. yes. So back to Psalms 50, verse 5. Okay. I think you answered it sort of, I just want to make sure I heard what I heard. Okay. I'm understanding verse 5, those that have made a, sac a covenant with me by sacrifice are the dead saints only and not living saints who have made a, sac a, a covenant by sacrifice. No, it's both. Okay. He should call to the heavens and to the earth that he might judge his people. Dead and living. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I, in a previous uh, lesson, I understood that to mean the dead only. Probably Turn because you've outlined the dead. Turn to Ephesians, first chapter. Thank you. 
think of 11. Right? These are what? These are the first chapter, verse 11, uh, verse 10. Verse 10. Oh, verse 10. Okay. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. This is the church of the firstborn, Prototokis. You think I know that? <laughs> no problem. But I don't know what the word dispensation. Dispensation is. What is that? Dispensation. Yeah. What does that mean? Dispersion. What does that mean exactly? A dispensation is a period within the framework of a time. You have um, what's called the dispensation of grace, which is within a certain framework of time. God's grace dominates that, that era. Then you have the dispensation of the law. Within a framework of time, mm -hmm. that condition dominates that framework, that period of time. The time dispensation, a grace dispensation. It's an allocation of a certain condition within a certain framework of time. Richard. Yes. Oh, that's the roof. Okay. Is it similar to an age? Or is it only stuck in time? Dispensation. Segments of time. So in the dispensation of, the, of grace, there is time. An age could be called a dispensation, yes. Okay. I mean, it's a period in which certain things happen. At the close of that dispensation, things change. But would you clarify, well, I will clarify, the fullness of the dispensation of time is when the conditions are right for that particular thing that the Father's master plan calls for. Yes. Yes. You will note. Well, let's go back there. And I'm making sure that what I'm going to say is what the scripture says. Mm -hmm. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, times, it's so talking about a passage of specific events, if you will, that culminate at a point in which now this is going to happen. Darling, because, because those Thank conditions. you for asking that question. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> it's, you see what's happening here? We're discussing this. We're, we're being more informed than he originally planned for us to be, but mm -hmm. because you asked a question. Thank you. Me too, you guys. That's why everybody has a unique place in the group setting. You're not here just to take up space. You're here to add by entering in, analyzing, and vocalizing so everybody else benefits. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Let's go on. <coughs> <laughs> so we see the essence, the quintessence of what we are looking at is the gathering. Everything from the beginning of sorrow sets that into motion. At that point, that's when <coughs> the teachers are going to be brought into the point in which they enter into their calling. Now, <clears throat> there'll be one fold, one shepherd. It's one family. This is the Prototokius teachers. Not the whole Prototokius because the whole Prototokus family 
doesn't come into being until the rapture. The rapture is the point at which the elders and the teachers are glorified, but the teachers already have their inheritance, they have their position. So they constitute the inner circle of the prototokos church. So you try to understand that the one fold refers specifically to protectors teachers. But not the totality of the prototokos no. church. It initially basically is bringing the prototokos church into being. Thank you for saying that, brother. As in the old situation, the book of Acts, the church started with 3,000, 5,000, whatever it was. But then the scripture goes on to say, and the Lord added yes. to the yes. church. Yes. Turn to Luke, 21st chapter, verse 27. Luke 21, 27 is Psalms 50, verse 1 and 2. Then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Our God shall come and shall not keep silence. A fire shall devour before him and it shall be very tempestuous about him. Power and great glory glory. Everybody is going to see it. The human race, the Luciferian kings, everybody is going to see him descending. Yes. And this is the gathering and not the rapture. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> now, what we find But the next scripture talks about our redemption draweth nigh. Yes. Meaning the rapture. No. Ra meaning the, the redemption is not the rapture? The redemption basically is talking about <clears throat> your reaching the culmination of what the Father has planned for you. No, because the rapture doesn't take place until long after that. Notice what he goes on to say. So when these things begin, beginning of sorrows, to come to pass, then look up, lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. We had said before, I had taught before, that this is the rapture. This is the gathering. I've got adoption pointed right there. At yeah, the I'm definition. saying I taught before. But revelation knowledge is progressive. Why isn't it the rapture? Because of the things he goes on to say. Drop down to verse 34. Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. So that day, that day, that day, the day of what? the gathering that day come upon you unawares for as a snare shall it come on all that dwell upon the face of the world all earth excuse me it's talking about the the the, um, the judgment <clears throat> the judgment is going to come first then will come the gathering then will come the communities then comes the rapture You're going to be redeemed long before the rapture. When the rapture takes place, yes, we get glorified. But we're already in our inheritance and the heavens and everything else, preparing everybody else for the rapture. So it goes from good to great. Yes. Notice what, uh, yeah, notice what he goes on to say. 
Verse 36, Watch ye therefore, pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things. All what things? The judgment yes. things. That shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Nothing about the rapture here. This is all the gathering. When I understood that the protector's angels, the priests, would have access to their inheritance, and more importantly, access to the Holy Spirit throughout the entire creation, then it became clear to me that it, this couldn't be the rapture. It had to be, it had to the, be gathering, the gathering. Because they've got to be elevated to be the exactly. stars exactly. to do the work. Exactly. But that, that takes a lot of brain power. Yeah, to get to that conclusion. For the longest time, I thought it was a rapture. Right, right. There's a lot of wrestling involved in that. Yeah, because, because nobody that I know of has ever taught the importance of the gathering. Sure. Just in case you didn't know, you have now enlightened us, Mr. Jones, and we have a better chance of making the rapture. Praise Thank the you. Lord. So, you know, I know you did that accidentally. You, know, you weren't intended to do that. <laughs> Under no Thank circumstances. You. Oh, praise Stuff the Lord. complicated for sure, though. Why is the sermon? I, I, I like to tell anyone who's prepared to listen, I can't imagine the Father allowing any old person to run the creation. There's <laughs> going to be a whole lot of grief involved to get to the stage where he allows that. So, yeah, complicated is the <coughs> least of the problem. It's what you do with your life here, what you can, Amen. what you can do and what you do. Amen. Yes. Well, the idea is the scripture is consistently telling us this doesn't come easy. You got to pay a price. Yes. You can't traipse around and be here and be there and experience this and experience that and expect to get the meat. Right. You have to determine you're going to dig in your heels. You're going to make this a priority. That's the only way. The Lord's basically laid that out. It has to become the most important thing in your life, Mr. Jones? Sure. Yes. Sure. yes. This actually is the suffering that the Lord talks about in Romans 8, 17. If you be, if be so that you suffer with Suffer him, with him, you'll be glorified together. Part of the suffering is sacrifice to learn the word and the will of God for your life. Yes. It's like... Uh, <clears throat> I, I get on Mason's case. I say, you know, he wants this, he wants that, he wants the other. I said, uh, I'm going to tell him, come here, sit down and be quiet so I can give this to you. You're running over here, you're running over there, you want this, you want that. I'm not giving it to you on the fly. You come back here and you sit down with your hand open and then I'll consider giving it to you. That's the way Christians operate. Yes. Oh, give it to me in 25 words or less. No. God is saying, sit down, be quiet, and put your hands out to receive what I have for you. The only way it's going to happen. So says we don't have if we don't ask. <coughs> and we ask amiss if we do ask. Your strong suit is humility, and you have respectability, but pronounced wisdom is your main attribute. And we know that you are a true man of God and are teaching us that exact same, same thing. Well, all I'm trying to do is to get people to see the word for themselves. If you can gainsay this, if you can disprove this, then I'll listen to what you have to say. Sure. But I get what I get, not because I'm conjuring up something, I get what I get because I'm looking at what the scripture is right. saying. Well, let's go on. <clears throat> scripture indicates... All who are rewarded in this gathering will constitute the church of the firstborn ones and will become the instructors of all the Father's creations. Turn to Matthew 24, verse 47. <clears throat> Matthew 24, 47. Verily I say unto you, 
that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. Who is the one that's going to be made ruler over all his goods? Verse 46. Mm -hmm. Blessed is that servant when his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Doing what? Giving them meat in due season. That's the whole lump sum total of the calling of the Prototokos teacher is to feed God's sheep. Give them what they need. And the Lord will be so pleased with the individual that's found doing that and he's going to give him authority to feed everybody. Now, I think there's one or two more things that he also get for for that credential, Mr. Jones, but you know, barely worth mentioning, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, there's, there's quite a few, uh, quite a lot that goes along with it. <clears throat> we see an example of this. Daniel, the eighth chapter, verses 13 to 16. When you feed the sheep, you have access to time and space there's no limitation you can uh, operate in the future you can operate in the past Daniel 8 verses 13 to 16 Daniel has a vision he doesn't understand what the vision is all about he explains what he sees. Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said to that certain saint which spake. What is he saying here? He hears a saint speaking to multitudes of hearers. And after the saint gets through speaking, he comes up to the saint to ask him a question. How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to get both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot. So, this Daniel sees a vision in heaven. A saint is teaching multitudes in the heavens. Daniel's on earth in time. Saints in eternity in the heavens. Daniel sees a saint in the heavens come to talk to this other saint and ask him a question. Daniel is in his own mind questioning. Notice what it goes on to say. Verse 14. And he, the saint, that's being asked a question by a saint in the heavens, now speaks to Daniel. He said unto me, unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. The saint is speaking beyond time, space, past, present, and future. He's teaching everybody that's teachable in God's creation. He's teaching at the same time. All those that exist in different time, space, continuous yes. sections, yes. as I'm understanding. Yes. That. Mm. Yes, simultaneously. Mm. Yes. Is that because he's in a multi-dimensional capacity? Yes. <clears throat> he's outside of. Remember, Jesus said, "I'm Alpha and Omega. Yeah. I am the beginning and the end." So he gives the Prototokos teacher the same capacity to operate as Alpha and Omega. There's no limitation. You see the saint here. He's speaking to masses in the heavens. He's speaking to one person in the heavens. He's answering that one person in the heavens at the same time this person in time is asking or thinking about the question. Is that the way it will be for us? That is you. That is you. After the elevation and prior to the... After the gathering, the inheritance. So immediately at the point of the gathering. After the gathering, the inheritance. When he comes back, remember what we just said, to judge his people, judge delegate authority to that individual that has merited it. When he gives that to you, 
you will be doing this. Mm -hmm. Look, this saint is talking about the tribulation period. They haven't even gotten to the tribulation right. period. Right. The end of the age. <clears throat> Teaching the entire creation simultaneously. Now, let me just ask a question too on this point. Sure. Because you zeroed in on he is talking to or teaching multitudes. How do we understand the multitudes at the same? In other words, he's speaking ones then and people who exist in the future, people who exist in the past are all hearing him at this one point in time. They've all been taken into the spirit? No. Well, yes, in that respect, the spirit is one that is engineering the reality right, right, in which everybody it. can receive. Gotcha. That's the point. So he initiates who he wants to hear at what region they're in. Yes. So he's, he's, he's the medium in which what you have to say is going to be so promulgated. So he's not only in, on earth speaking to Daniel, he's multidimensional yes. speaking to others at the same yes, time. Yes, simultaneously. Doesn't that require the spirit to be, I don't want to use the word commanded because the spirit is God, but the spirit to be informed of who needs to be and who doesn't need to be in the spirit to receive this at that time. The spirit knows it's omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent. Hmm. That's pretty cool. So will you be, because the Spirit's in the saint. It's doing the teaching. Of course. I'm being slow. Right. <laughs> no, no problem. You're getting the, the vignette of the vastness of the authority that's going to be given by the Lord. Does this imply that all those who are to be taught the truths of the not yet glorified faithful and wise servant, Matthew 24, 45, is giving, he's teaching, I see I can't use the word time because he's in eternity, he's teaching in one session, let me use that, that, that term, to various peoples at various points in time. So everyone who's going to learn that thing is present at that session. That's what I'm really trying to, trying to say. Does that make sense to you? Well, <clears throat> looking at it this way, he has the capacity to touch everybody mm. wherever they are simultaneously with the revelation. At their given, at his chosen point his, in time. Yeah, exactly. Right. So when he, when he <clears throat> speaks to Daniel, Daniel's shocked because Daniel probably thinks this guy, you know, he's, he's looking over there, he can't see me. No, Daniel sees. He's, he sees him speaking to all these multitudes. He sees the saint come up, they ask him a question. He's got a question in his mind. He hasn't even asked the guy. Right. But he knows instantaneously Daniel wants to know the answer also. Agreed. But is Daniel shocked that he's hearing the answer to the question he hasn't yet spoken out? No. Okay. No, so because he's, he's looking for somebody gotcha. to give him an understanding. And I imagine the Holy Spirit would clue him in. Oh, yeah. To some yeah. degree. Now, what will happen here, the, 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 the beauty of all this is, Daniel's on earth wanting, after he gives this, he's been given this vision to get comprehension, you could be standing next to Daniel, fishing in this river, and not know a wit about yes. what's going on. Yes. Totally in the dark. Completely different, yes. Yeah. Does the person standing next to the one who's in the reality, in other words, let's take Daniel as being in the reality. Somebody is know, washing their clothes whilst Daniel's standing on the, on the back. Does the person washing their clothes, are they aware that Daniel is actually in their reality? Sure. Sure, they can see him. They can see so what's going on. What do they see him doing? They don't have a comprehension. They won't have an understanding. He's doing something that they have no comprehension. He's talking to somebody. They don't know who he's talking to. Okay. Or what's being said. Because they're outside of that reality. So it would look like Daniel was crazy. Sure. To person. sure. Well, what's interesting is that we're getting a caption of a conversation between Daniel and, and, and the angel. And it's not for Daniel, but he's getting an answer that is for us. So Daniel's asking for us, actually. Yeah, he's asking for himself also because he wants understanding, but he is, his ministry here is just to be the custodian. Sure. Write it all down. You're not going to get full comprehension of it. You're just 
there to pass it on right. to the person that it's really intended for right. because it's not for your time then. That's what cool. If only Daniel could comprehend at that time just how important his part in this is. Well, he knows it's very important, but he can't, uh, he can't comprehend the fullness no. because he can't comprehend the events in that respect. Now, the, the saint, we see a hierarchy here. One saint doesn't have the answer. He goes to the saint that's doing the speaking and gets an understanding along with Daniel. We see a division here. Scripture teaches the teacher, the teacher group, become the angels of the churches. Revelation, the first chapter, verse 20. Revelation 1, verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand. Verse 16 tells you that. He had in his right hand seven stars. The Lord says what the seven stars are. And the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. Prototokos teachers. And the seven candlesticks, which thou sawest, are the seven churches. The elder group. Out of the churches come the elder group. That's... Res that's um, they have been <clears throat> redeemed out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation. So they constitute, along with the stars, the Prototokos congregation. You don't see the candlesticks in his hand. You see the stars in his hand. Yes. She raised her hand. The question. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Is it possible that one of the witnesses could come from this group? From this, no, this no, thing? No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Can you explain to the one? Because the witnesses come out of the Old Testament era. The, the Elijah, Elijah. They translate, they translate into the New Testament. They don't make the rapture. All that happens during the tribulation period. The rapture's already taken they're place. They're just going to be like brought down kind of thing? Or are they going to, are there people here already? No. Mm -hmm. No, no. The two witnesses are on earth when the rapture takes place. They aren't even two witnesses. They become the two witnesses during the tribulation period later on mm -hmm. when they're given power and they go forth and they prophesy three and a half years. So the people that get stuck here, right? Yeah. Well, they missed the rapture because they're from the old covenant era. They have to translate into new covenant era by the power that they're given and being martyred, they get killed. Right. And then after they die, three and a half, three and a half days later, they resurrect, then they go to heaven. Mm -hmm. So I understand that from the point that they are born manifest into the human race. So we know that they were YHVH spirits manifesting into the human race. The moment they did that, I presume they go through a memory wipe of some form. Everybody does. Memory. Right. So they have no clue that they're to become the two witnesses until they become the two witnesses. That's right. Mm. Even Jesus had a memory problem because he couldn't tell his brethren. Right. He had to go to the Father on a mountain all night and have the Father show him who to choose. And that policy is built into the, the Father's mind. Yes. Mm. Yes. So what you have here is basically the rudimentary pieces of the Father's master plan for the Prototokos. Father does things masterfully with great honor, great glory. And when you realize that you can have a part in this, man, it boggles the mind. 
the truth, nothing but the truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Mind-boggling.